Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Change, level four, quantifying and modeling change. The first thing you want to do before you quantify and model is you want to define the system. What's the system that we're investigating? And what kind of change are we looking at within the system itself? Now, for us to quantify change, uh, we really have to look at what's changing over time. So we're going to look at how things go in and out of the system over time. So to understand that, we have to define what's the system, what comes into the system, what goes out of the system. And it's really like accounting, just keeping track of what comes into the system and then out over time. The object that represents uh, change is going to be this yellow semicircle and the reason why is that it can change in this direction or it can remain stable in this direction but what we're really trying to do now is not only quantify how much is it changing but also mathematically model that is what we're going to be looking at. After watching this video you should be able to quantify and model change in something like water flowing into and out of a sink or if we look at carbon moving into the atmosphere and then back into earth systems. I'm going to start by showing you my thinking as we look at objects moving into a wooden box and out again and then when I'm done with that you'll have a chance to do the same with Mongolian earnings. And so let me clean this up and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to define the system. In this case, the system is going to be this wooden box. So let me define the system. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at over time what comes into the system and what comes out of the system. And so I'm just going to use these dice to represent what comes into the system. So let's say two wooden cubes come into the wooden box every unit time. And then we're going to say that just one uh, cube comes out of the box over time. So I'm going to just put these down here. And so let's get started. So at time zero, we're going to have 10 cubes inside the box. But now I'm going to put two cubes in. So these would be the inputs. So two cubes come in and then one comes out. And now let's do that again. So two cubes come in and then one comes out. And then two cubes come in and one comes out. So we started with 10 in the box to start with, and now we have 13 cubes that are going to be in the box. And so let me clean this up and we'll start uh, quantifying that change up above. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to decide what was the system to start. So let me write down the, the starting value of the system. So at the beginning there were 10 cubes in the system. And now let's go to time one and let me fill in these boxes. Okay, so at time unit one, we had two uh, cubes come into the box. So we had 10 cubes before, we added two cubes to it, but then we had one cube go out. So how much are we going to have in the system? there's going to be 11 cubes in the system because we had one, two come in, one come out, so there's a net addition of one cube into the system. Now let's look at time two and time three. Okay, so uh, for the second at time two, uh, we had two into the system, one out of the system, so we increased a net of one, so it's 12. Then we had two into the system, we had one out of the system, so it's now 13. And so I could keep doing this forever. What I'm doing here is I'm quantifying change in the system. How is the system changing over time? But you can start to see that this is going to be laborious for me to do this for all of the cubes. And so what we try to do next is we try to find a mathematical model that would explain what happens in the system over time. So let me move this down below and let's define what these parts are. Okay, so if we look at time, time is going from one to two to three. So time is varying and so it's changing over time. And so what I could write for time is we could just write a variable. So let's write t represent time. So t is going to represent time. What's the input into the system? Well, you can see the input is constant. It always is two. So I could just write two for a definition for what the input is. Um, what are the output? You can see that's a constant as well. So I could just write one for the constant. 
And now what we can try to come up with is a mathematical uh, explanation of what the system is. So I'm going to write that as S. So let's say the system is equal to S. So now my goal is to come up with a mathematical model that for any time we could figure out what's in the system itself. And so I'm going to come up with a mathematical model or a mathematical expression. So how do we start? Well, what we're trying to figure out is what's happening to S over time. So I'm going to say S is equal to, and so I'm going to write an equation for that. Um, what did the system start with? If you remember, we started with a value of 10. So it always starts with a value of 10. Remember, we were adding over time. What's the next thing that we're doing? Well, we have to add what comes into the system. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm just writing 2, which is the constant input, times time. So if we look at here, uh, when we're adding at time 3, it's 3 times 2. Or when we get to this third step, there'd be 6 that we're adding into the system itself. Now we're also losing out of the system. So that means we have to subtract a value. So this is now a mathematical model where the system number is equal to 10 plus 2 times time minus 1 times time, where 2 and 1 are the rates into or the amount into and out of the system itself. So let's see if this value or this expression works out. So let's look at time 3. So we would have 10 plus 2 times 3, which is 6, minus 1 times 3, which is minus 3, and so we'd get 13. And so it doesn't matter what our time value is. If it's 5, for example, it would be 10 minus 5 or it'd be 15. And so we call this a mathematical model that explains what's happening into the system itself. So what I'm going to do is now clean this off and I'm going to set up uh, one for you to try. Okay, for this next example, what I've got is Mongolian earnings. So I was looking on the internet and I found that an average person in Mongolia makes $500 a month. And so they make around $6,000 a year. They also, in Mongolia, have a flat tax rate. So that means at the end of the year, they take 10% of your earnings for the year. Those are the taxes. And so we can think of Mongolian earnings as the system. And so what I'd love to have you do is fill out a data table like I was just doing. What comes into the system if we think of the system as the earnings over time? So in year one, in year two, in year three. What comes into the system? How does that change over time? And then once you've done that, try to figure out a mathematical model. So pause the video. You could use the thinking slides if you want to down below. Pause the video, try to do it on your own, and then come back and we'll see how our thinking compares. Okay, so the first thing I, I would figure out is what's coming into the system. So that value is going to be $6,000. What comes out of the system, it's going to be $600. And so let me figure out year one. So the first thing I did is I, write, I wrote down how much money was in the system at the beginning. So at time zero, there'd be zero dollars in the account. Um, there's six thousand dollars that they earn during the year. So that would be added into the system. Those are going to be positives. But then we're going to lose that six hundred dollars as a flat tax. And so you can see that the system is going to be fifty four hundred dollars. Let me do year two and year three. Okay, so at each level you can see that we are adding 6,000 to the account. So if we add 6,000 to 5,400, we're going to get 11,400. But then you're losing that $600. And so now you're down to 10,800. And so we're going to do the same thing. Essentially what you're gaining each time is $5,400 at each step along the way. So I'm going to pull these values down below and then I'm going to show you how I would work out a mathematical model for that.
Okay, so what I'm going to try to figure out then is a mathematical uh, model for what our earnings are, or Mongolian earnings over time. So I'm going to say E is equal to. So we start with the value in their earnings to uh, time zero. So they're going to start with zero dollars to start. But then what we're going to do is for every year, so that's our variable y, we're going to get $6,000 for every year y. So let me show you how I would write that. And then they're going to lose $600 for every year. So now we have a mathematical model. So if I want to figure out how much am I going to make if I'm in Mongolia and I work for, let's say, 10 years, that's going to be 6,000 times 10. So that's going to be $60,000. But then I'm going to lose $6,000 for that. So I'm going to end up with $54,000 over a 10-year over a period of time. So you can see the value of creating a mathematical model. We don't have to quantify the change over time. So that's my thinking, just showing you uh, how we can quantify and model what comes into a system over time. I got some thinking slides down below. You could do this with water flowing into and out of a sink, or you could even do a science example looking at global carbon cycling, how much carbon goes into the atmosphere and then how much is reclaimed into Earth systems. So again, that is thinking and change. It's level four, uh, quantifying and modeling change, and I hope that was helpful.